Fantastic. Reignite Conference is going to be over the top, off the hook. It's going to be amazing. So register and bring your friends, your family, and your enemies. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, what a great Easter we had. And I just love Resurrection Sunday. You know, the third day means that for everyone there's a new day. I just sense there's a prophetic word for us. In fact, I had a word for 2025. I felt like God gave me a word for our church, new. But I feel it's for now, a new day. God wants to do something new in you. Amen. Can we thank our worship team for leading us with such excellence? Are you ready for the word of God this morning? Luke 18, verse 35. Then it happened that as he, Jesus, was near Jericho, that a certain blind man sat by the road begging. And hearing a multitude passing by, he asked what it meant. So they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. And he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those who went before warned him that he should be quiet. There will always be people who tell you to quieten down. There used to be signs outside churches in South Africa, stilta kerk, quieten down. But I want to tell you when the world wants to quieten you down, when the world wants to cancel you, Jesus wants to call you to a new day. Amen. Watch what Bartimaeus said. What did, he, what did he do? How did he respond to the crowd? But he cried out all the more. When the world says, turn it down, it's time to turn the volume up. It's time to find your voice. Amen? Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be brought to him. The same crowd that told him to keep quiet had to call him to Jesus. And when he came near, he asked him, saying, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. It's amazing what there is in a shout. There's faith in a shout. And I want you to discover your voice. And I want you to have faith for your life that God has a new day. He has a new season. He has a new something new in store for you from today. And immediately he received his sight and followed him and glorified God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. There are people that are waiting to meet God, to praise God because of what you experience in your life. Because Bartimaeus received a miracle, people around him started to praise God. There is a shout that shifts the atmosphere in your home. In your work, Simon Sinek says that atmosphere is the optimal catalyst for change in human performance. And when you combine an atmosphere in your home, in your work, with an attitude, boom, it's a new day. You're a new person. There's a new trans trans trajectory. There's a transformation that happens. You see, your attitude is determined by the altitude of what you believe, what you believe about yourself, what you believe about God, and what you believe about life. Attitude is determined by the altitude of what you believe and what you're believing for. Taron said it this morning. You and I are believing in something. You believe in something. Even if you don't believe there's a God, you believe. You have a belief. We are made to believe. And there's a shaft that shifts the atmosphere. It shifts our attitude. But when we shout, our, our miracle offering this year, our goal is five million. And the miracle offering is because in, our, in this church, as we follow the Word of God and the Holy Spirit, we have more vision every single year. But it's not, the miracle offering is not just for the church to accomplish five million rand more in income. It's to catalyze a vision in you. It's to, to awaken you. That, I love that. I love that, the conference name, Awaken. It's to awaken in you something more that God has for you. That as you pray here and obey about the miracle offering, God is going to stretch you to believe for more in your life. Because if he, can, if he can get it to you, and if He can get it through you, He'll get more to you. We need to develop vision for our lives. You see, when Bartimaeus shouted out, others wanted to cancel him and turn him down. But what did he do? He turned the volume up. Friends, if you're stuck, there's a shout that will get you out 
of what you're stuck in. It's time to shout. It's time to break the silence. Mo, you got it. Let's go. We need to find our voice. You need to locate your purpose by proclaiming your allegiance by how loud and how proud you are of the one you worship. We're letting society be loud and proud. There's even a pride month. But we are loud and proud about Jesus every day. Amen. Silence is not an option. If you're looking for a quiet church, there are many even on the street. So you don't have to go far. But silence is not an option in your present situation. That beggar was there for many years. Bartimaeus was there for many years. He was stuck in a situation, but he had another option when Jesus passed him by. Don't let Jesus walk on by. You're in church this morning. You're online this morning. You're watching this on YouTube. There's a reason. Don't let Jesus pass you by. What's your vision? What Do you have clarity? What's next for you? I just gave you a prophetic word. God's got a new day for you. Who will you be if you're stuck in indecision, insecurity, instability, insanity? I'm not insane. If you keep on doing the same things all the time and wanting change but never changing, woo-woo, you need a checkup from the neck up. That's right. Can we call it like it is? Yet church, you're going to get the truth. And the word is the truth, and the truth will set you free. What's next for you? And you've got to step into next. If you've just given your life to Jesus over Easter or recently, what's next for you is baptism in, the wa- in water, going, being baptized. If you've been baptized in water, have you been baptized with the Holy Spirit? Do you speak in tongues? Or you, do you have a prayer life that is motivated, empowered by the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you? What's next? What's next? Maybe it's lifestyle of freedom, growth track. We, it's a new semester. Step into growth track if you haven't done growth track. Then do lifestyle of freedom one or two. Why? Because you'll know, you'll get to know who you are in Christ, and you'll get to know how God has designed you for an optimum, prosperous, victorious life. That's what you'll learn in lifestyle of freedom. Then there's life group. Get part of a community of faith where you can love and be loved, where you can celebrate others and be celebrated. Get involved in the dream team on a Sunday and serve the purpose of God on a Friday night with our incredible next generation ministries. What's next for you? Maybe what's next for you is you need to sing a bit louder. I love it when the worship team, they just drop the music and you hear the congregation singing. Don't be caught with a mouthful of teeth. Open your mouth and sing praise to our God. Well, I've never lifted my, lift your hand. You can start just like with the TV. Carrying the TV. How big was the fish? (laughs) Then you can lift your hands up, both of them. You can even do one. (laughs) We got to move in the house of God. Get your praise on. Break the silence. You see, To worship, read the Bible, to worship Him is to be obedient to Him. And obedience, you don't have to understand where you're going or what's next. You just got to, in obedience, you just got to understand who you're with. It's not the direction you're traveling in, it's the person you're traveling with. And you're traveling with Jesus. When you shout, you change the atmosphere. Do you shout at home because you're angry, because you're empty? Or do you shout because you've got a shout of praise in you? Can you change the temperature at home? You see, a shout unlocks an atmosphere. And there needs to be, sometimes the atmosphere needs to change in you. Well, Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd, and he sets a banqueting table before me in the presence of my enemies. But what if I'm the only one seated at my table? It may be that the enemy is in me. The way I think about life, the way I think about myself. My mind, my emotions, my will, my mental health. If you're having mental health issues, 
I want to challenge you that today you're going to shout and your shout is going to change and shift your, your, your emotions, your, your, your belief system, your primary conviction about who you are, about who God is, and about how good life is. But it comes from a shout. If you don't see a future for yourself, you've got to shout before you see it. You see, Bartimaeus was blind. He couldn't see. He had issues with his optical nerves, but his vocal cords were okay. So stop complaining about what you don't have and start using what you do have. And if you cannot see, then at least you can shout. He shouted, son of David, have mercy upon me. Son of David, he understood that was a term that he he recognized the Messiah. And he's praising the Messiah because he's the deliverer. Your shout, your praise will change the tone, the temperature, and the atmosphere for you and your children and your children's children. This was outside Jericho. His ancestors possessed Jericho with what? A shout. You see, when you shout, you start a legacy that others will possess the promises of God because you had the audacity to lift your voice and to shout in praise. Silence is not an option. We will not tolerate being a beggar all our lives. We need to make some noise. We sang it this morning, I won't be quiet, my God is alive. You see, the crowd tried to cancel him, but Jesus called him. And uh, remember in Palm Sunday, we, we celebrated the crowd that, that's, that's quite Hosanna saved now. And um, that crowd was stuck in religion. That crowd was stuck under Roman oppression. But they with a loud voice shouted, Hosanna. And the Pharisees said to Jesus, rebuke your disciples. And Jesus said to them in verse 40 of Luke chapter 19, he says, I tell you that if these keep silent, the very stones, the very rocks will cry out and give me praise. And I want to declare this morning, ain't no rock going to steal my praise. Ain't no rocks going to take my place. I'm a one that's going to shout my praise because of what he's done for me. Amen. We need to stop focusing on what we can't do. And we need to start focusing on what we can do. Don't fuss about what you can't see. Start focusing on what you can do and you can shout. Your stress comes from obsessing about what you don't have, your weaknesses, your brokenness. But before you can open your eyes, there needs to be a shout in your mouth. Can you thank Jesus And we sang it this morning, can you thank Jesus because of where you've come from? Can you thank Jesus in advance about what's about to be broken off your life? Can you thank Jesus that you are not just uh, the fruit of your ancestry and all the dysfunction of your family, but you're going to start a new lineage in your your ancestry, in your family line, and you're not going to continue what you were given, but you're going to start a new legacy in Jesus' name. You're going to take the good things from the past, but you're going to do better for the future. Are you going to give a shout this morning so that you can declare that your mental health is not going to keep you in a place of being stuck emotionally, stuck in depression, stuck in disappointment, stuck in burdens? No, we're going to give a shout. Well, Pastor, if I really knew God's will, I would. Well, I'm so glad you want to know God's will. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 18. Look at what it says. Give thanks. In all circumstances, not for all circumstances. Irrespective of the circumstance you're in, you can give thanks in all circumstances. Next one. Next slide. Next one. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for who? For you. The will of God for you is to give thanks in all circumstances, in every situation. Stop waiting for something to change and start bringing the change by your shout. What do you have? You have faith, 
as a believer that moves mountains. You have a shout that brings down walls. You have a joy that's unspeakable. You have a peace that passes understanding. You have a grace that is sufficient. You have an anointing that breaks the yoke. You have a freedom and forgiveness that can only be found in Jesus. You have the gift and the call of God that is irrevocable. You have righteousness that is not your own. It was given by another and he is your savior. You have a cup that overflows. You have mercies that are new every morning. You have a love of a father that floods your heart by the Holy Spirit. You have all you need for righteousness and godliness in Jesus Christ. You have prosperity that's a fruit of a surrendered soul. You have a firm foundation in a flimsy world. You have a promise, purpose, meaning, and destiny. You have a shepherd that leads you by, beside still waters into green pastures. You have an enemy that feeds you. You have, a, you have a shepherd that feeds you in the presence of your enemies. You and I have so much to shout about. Amen? Amen. I want the worship team to come up because we're going to get ready to shout in this place. Amen? Because I want something to shift in the atmosphere of your heart, in your mind. I want something to shift in your home, in your workplace. And it starts with a shout. Amen. So if you're Anglo-Saxon, if you're white, you need to get rid of your issues. We're going to shout now. Amen? Black people are going to teach us how to do church. Amen? Amen? That's why we're a multicultural church. We celebrate every culture because we represent heaven on earth. Amen? Amen? And the Indians, you're not just going to set the way in how much you put in the offering, you're going to shout as well. Amen. <laughs> and the Khalids, we're not going to shout at each other, we're going to shout at Jesus, okay? <laughs> hey, 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 I was given honorary membership to the conservative colored clan at Liberty Church. When I told them what kind of families Karen and I come from, our family was always shouting at each other. Karen's mom traced her with a broomstick. They said, no, we colored. <laughs> you and I have so much to shout about. You see, what caught Jesus' attention was not Bartimaeus' blindness. Jesus walked past Bartimaeus the beggar, but Bartimaeus the worshiper caught his attention. Your need is not going to catch Jesus' attention. It's your praise. He inhabits the praises of His people. And when He inhabits your praise, He's present to bring the change. That's what He does. In the book of 1 Samuel, the Israelites were defeated by the Philistines. And they decided to go and fetch the Ark of the Covenant that represented the presence of God from Shiloh. And 1 Samuel 4 and verse 5 says, When the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted so loudly that the earth shook and the Philistines heard them. When your enemy who's just defeated you hears you shout, because of the ark of the presence, where the glory is, there's victory. Where glory is, there's victory. There's a glory and a victory we need to discover. Fast Psalm 47 says, clap your hands, all, your peop all you people. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. This morning, we get to shout to God with a voice of triumph. Because we're on the other side of the victory of the cross. We are more than conquerors through what Christ has accomplished for us in Jesus' name. Isaiah 54 says, sing or barren. Maybe you're barren. You haven't produced. You're disappointed. Your life is not turning out the way you dreamt it would when you were a teenager. It says sing, O barren. You have not born. Maybe you want a child, but you couldn't have a child. Maybe you wanted more friends that you have than you have. Maybe you wanted different friends than the friends you do have. I don't know what you need this morning, but it says sing, O barren. You have not born. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. If you want a breakthrough, you got to first break forth with a shout to God. If you want things to break off you, you first got to break forth in singing. So get ready to shout a shout of praise. Amen. Are you getting ready? I'm, I'm getting you ready. I'm getting you ready. If you don't, 
If you don't have the faith to shout, well, I'm not really an extrovert. I'm not really into these charismatic, happy, clappy churches. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying that if you don't have the faith to shout, there's a shout that is a shout of faith. When you shout, that's the faith you're going to release. Your obedience is going to release something in the Spirit. Because when you shout the shout of faith, you call the things that don't exist as though they do. If you need healing and you're in pain, your shout, you're going to call forth healing in Jesus' name. If you're feeling broken and disembodied and disingenuous and isolated, your shout is going to bring wholeness. Your shout is going to make you, you feel too weak to shout. No, no, no. When you shout, you call the things that don't exist as though they do. And in your weakness, you're going to become strong because you're going to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. You see, praise declares the promise of God in a bright new day even though you're living in the darkest hour, even though you're in the middle of a storm. Are you getting ready? At our West Campus, we have a lady who sits in the front just there. And her name is Rhoda, and she knows I'm telling you about it. Well, she doesn't know, she'll find out. But I've, it's not the first time I've shared this in her presence before. At our West Campus, we have Rhoda. Rhoda is very loud. When she worships, she shouts out loud. But I want to tell you, when, when I have a person that needs a demon delivered from them, I call on Rhoda. She's amazing. And when we have international guests go to our West Campus, and Rhoda's there, everyone's always a bit, some of you have been to West Campus. By the way, if you haven't been to West Campus, visit the family. It's fantastic. But Rhoda's loud. But don't you ever judge Rhoda for how loud she is. If you understood the abuse, the dysfunction she came through in her marriage, she's not married anymore. But if you knew what God brought her through, you would understand why she's so loud in her praise of the one who brought her through everything she's been through. Amen. Luke 17. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned to Jesus with a loud voice and glorified God. In Joshua chapter 6, before they could enter the promised land, the first city out of bondage, they had to march around the walls in Jericho six days in silence with the Ark of the Covenant. On the seventh day, they walked six, days in, six times around the walls in silence. And then they gave a mighty shout. What we don't always consider is that before Jericho, they circumcised all the men. I think one of the greatest miracles is they walked around in silence. Listen, we circumcise boys on the eighth day because that's when the blood clots. But these are men. And they didn't have surgical instruments like we do today. So we got a whole army for six days walking around the walls of Jericho. And then on the seventh day, six times, ah, oh, in silence. Listen, you may have walked a long road in a lot of pain, but don't stop on six. You gotta walk one more time around those walls. And you gotta let out a shot to your God. Amen. And listen, when they shouted, a great shout, it says that the walls fell down and they went straight ahead of them. Your children and your grandchildren will walk on the walls that you shouted down in your family because you have the faith today. Are you ready to shout? Are you ready to shout out that He's great and greatly to be praised? Are you ready? I'm going to count to three. Are you ready? One, two, three.
And don't just shout in church. God has heard you shout here. You can shout during the week. You can claim the promise of God as you read the Word of God. You can speak out the promises of God. And you can declare a shout over your, over your soul in your house, in your workplace. If you have an office, close the door. <laughs> Maybe God's going to call you to shout at work. Maybe they've heard you shout. And the words you used were in tongues. It's a different shout, amen? If you're in this place right now,